So you want to be a minimalist. Then follow these steps. Step one, grab some coffee. It's going to be a long day. Step two, throw it all out. Look, what in no way I made a way. Call my lane, I paved the way. Drew it up nice, I made the play. What a good day to get paid today. What in no way I made the way. Call my lane, I paved the way. No, that's not actually how minimalism works, so we'll just uh, put this back. I tried minimalism for 30 days. And some of you may be saying, minimalism? What the heck is that? Well, according to my research, it is a movement that emerged in the 1960s as a style of art characterized by the use of simple shapes and materials. Although through time, minimalism evolved to something much more than that. Rather, a way of living that focuses on being simple, mindful, and purposeful. And if you ask Joshua Becker, an author who has been a minimalist for 15 years, he will tell you that minimalism is intentionally living with only the things you really need. Hmm, needs only? Hey Jordan, uh, we're just gonna be focusing on needs for now on, so this beard wash, <laughs> You don't need it anymore. Oh, and something just popped in my head, not completely random and out of the blue, but you don't really need the beard either. So why did I choose to try out minimalism? Well, a new friend of mine encouraged me to do it. And why would I turn down an opportunity to do yet another 30 day challenge? So let me introduce you to my new friend, the mastermind behind my 30 days of minimalism. Her name goes by, the Minimal Mom. Oh, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. And today we're gonna- uh, wait, 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 wait. No, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. Um, no, I'm pretty sure I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. I got throw pillows. Well, fine, you can be the minimal mom. Why do you get to be minimal and I have to be awkward? Well, anyway, Dawn is here to teach me how to do minimalism, minimalism. And she not only knows how to pronounce the word correctly, but she also has been a minimalist for eight years and she inspires millions of people every month through her YouTube channel and online courses. So Dawn, the floor is yours. What do I need to minimize in my home to become a minimalist? Okay, and here's what I did. So as far as dishes go, we're gonna have one place setting per person, one mug, one cup, one sippy cup, one, one of each per person. For pots and pans, you can have four to five, so pick out your favorites and set aside the rest. And then look around your kitchen for any small appliances. Anything that you have not used in the past year, you're gonna remove from your kitchen. As far as food storage containers, you can have about six stored with the lids on. For cooking utensils, we're gonna have one of each. And for mixing bowls, roughly three to five. Nope, not bowls, plates, and cups. Inventory, new way of thinking of it. This is our word of the day. Inventory, say it with me. Inventory. Inventory. So first, I'm starting off by grabbing what Don would call a quarantine bin. A bin where all of my extra dishes will go until the end of these 30 days. Although Don would say that ideally a quarantine bin should be a cardboard box so that in 30 days, if I decide that I don't miss any of this stuff at all, then I could just easily donate this box without even looking at it again. But all I could find was this red bin. <sighs> Here we go. I've got it so crowded up there that I can't even fit my coffee in there anymore. So the coffee now lives on the counter. One place setting per person. Two. Three. I don't care if the baby's not eating off plates yet. She's a person, she counts. Four. Here is all the cups I have. One per person. Coffee mugs, one per person. So I'll take this one I'm using. No, Don. No way. Three bowls. Aw oh, man, you know how excited I was to find the space-saving three-tiered cutting board set? Darn you, minimal mom. All your stuff tells a story. And if your name is Lori, maybe you went to the story and bought too much inventory. And now you are sure that this was not a good idea because now you have too much story storage. Storage. 
Holy cow, look at all this space! It could look a lot emptier, but I have a lot of random stuff up here, like coffee creamers, sweeteners, sugar, cornstarch. I have very minimal space in my kitchen, so I have to make the best use of it. Now on to food storage containers. Boy, do I have a lot of those. I'm kind of excited to be rid of some of them. When I first heard Don's idea of leaving the lids on the containers, I thought, that's crazy. How could I even do that? My cabinets would be stuffed because I have too many containers. Well, exactly. Perhaps I just have too many containers. Something about this process feels freeing. That is a box of extra Tupperware that when my friends come over for a party, they can take their food home with them and not return the Tupperware. I'm not gonna minimize that. And this cabinet is complete. On to pots and pans. I feel like I already don't have a crazy amount of these, so it was pretty easy to follow this step. I only had to get rid of a couple. Mixing bowls, on the other hand, I have way more than I need, so I will remove these plastic ones and keep the beautiful glass ones. Now onto utensils. And as you can see, it shares a drawer with the baby's bibs, to which she has entirely too many of, so we are just gonna minimize both of them. And let me tell you, babies are messy, and therefore, I was willing to cut down to 11 bibs, but no less. Next, I'm gonna go through my utensils. She said one of each utensil, so I think that's pretty reasonable. The only thing I may get angry about is the spatula, but we'll get through it. It's okay, it's only 30 days. As far as appliances, she said anything you haven't used within a year, put it away. But I actually use all of these at least once a month, so they're here to stay. Let's talk about linens. Bath towels, washcloths, we're gonna have one per person. You can have two washcloths for the baby. They use a few more. Holy towels. Turns out I have a lot of towels. Nine, 11, 12, 16. Why do I think I need this many towels? The mountain of towels, my friends. Skyla might try to climb it. Even though the baby is destroying all of my hard work, we have four towels now. It's going bye-bye. <coughs> That's just the way it is, Skyla, I'm sorry. Take it up with the minimal mom. And then as instructed, I did one washcloth per person and two for the baby. I cut down our hand towels as well because they were also overflowing and that is everything I'm bringing to the basement. All right, let's talk about your closet and your clothes. Two pairs of shoes per person, and then we're gonna have five shirts, five dresses, since I know you wear dresses, three pairs of jeans, two pairs of leggings, and two cardigans. So I've never been a big shoe person, and we pretty much already have two shoes per person. We keep any extra shoes for different seasons packed away in the closet. All right, time for the fun part clothing. So Don said I can have five shirts and five dresses. I'm currently picking out my favorites and hanging them up on this door. It wasn't too hard, honestly, as I just picked out the ones that I tend to wear the most. And now all of these extra clothes I'm going to pack away for 30 days. Next, I'm going through my pants and picking out my favorites as well. I get to have three jeans and two leggings. And for the most part, any pants that are colored, I don't really wear anyway, so it wasn't too hard to choose. And here is my entire wardrobe. We have two pairs of leggings, three pairs of jeans, two cardigans, five dresses, and five shirts. Then for the kids, roughly five t-shirts, around five to six long sleeve shirts, and then five to six pairs of pants. Four sets of pajamas, and four pairs of shorts if it's warm where you are. My son has a ton of clothes. Some of it is in the dirty laundry, so when that's clean, I will make sure not to add it to these dressers as I minimize his clothing. So I'm grabbing four shorts, four PJs, six t-shirts, five long sleeve shirts, and I will have at least five pairs of pants, but some are in the hamper currently. The rest of the clothes I put in a box in his closet, which will stay there for at least 30 days. For the baby, we can do some give and take here, but roughly seven of everything. Sleepers, onesies, long sleeve shirts, pants, and socks. The baby's dresser is more jam packed than any other dresser. I've gotten so many hand-me-downs from friends that sometimes I can't even close them right and it stresses me out. But have no fear, I took care of it. These are my sleepers, onesies, long sleeve onesies, socks, and a skirt that I like to put her in. 
pants. These are leggings for dresses. Shirts that go over dresses that are short sleeved because it's still kind of cold. Stockings and a couple of warmer sweaters. Wearable blankets and a baby. Now for toys. It can be a little bit hard to quantify, but I like to have about three bins of open-ended toys for our kids if you're doing an experiment and testing this out. And then for books, it really depends on the age of your child, but I would try to have anywhere from 15 to 20. So first, I'll start by going through his books. He's got a lot of them, but there's even more that's sitting on a bookshelf in the basement because I do rotate his books. I'd say he has about 50 residing on his shelves and I managed to get it down to 15. We will see if he notices. So I would love to do the toy part of this experiment, but my son is almost five and I'm pretty sure he would lose it if he came home from school and suddenly only had three bins of toys. But that doesn't mean I won't quarantine some of his toys. I went through his room and pretty much removed anything he hasn't played with in over six months. We will see if he notices and hey, if he does, it's right in the basement. I can just bring it back upstairs. Okay, so obviously I didn't cover everything in your home, but I think by testing out these key areas, you're gonna know if minimalism is for you or not. All right, good luck. I'm excited to see how it goes and no more impersonating me, okay? That wasn't me. That was my cousin, Mariel. Obviously. All right, so it has officially been 30 days since I started this challenge. How has my month of trying minimalism gone? Well, I'm gonna take you through week by week. So let's start with week one. During week one, I was enjoying the benefits of all this extra space I now had. First of all, I could finally put away my coffee, the thing I haven't been able to do in months because there was never enough room in the cabinets. I also loved being able to brag to my husband that I had less clothes than him. How cool am I? So unmaterialistic, so humble. And additionally, I loved how easy it was to get dressed in the morning. I used to spend way too long trying to find an outfit for the day, but with only 10 choices now, I didn't have to think about it. I knew that every clothing item in my closet were pieces that I loved and could count on to make me look good. So I just grabbed the first one I could see and that was really nice. I think it saved me about 10 minutes every day. But week one also brought on a lot of initial annoyances, mostly around dishes. I finally got a dishwasher a couple months before starting this challenge and it was the first time in seven years that I didn't have to hand wash dishes anymore. And now, suddenly, we were running out of dishes by lunchtime. We would use all four of our plates and therefore would have to wash them in order for us to have something to eat off for dinner. And then, when I got to the end of the night, I would go to start the dishwasher, but there would be only about 10 dishes in there, ultimately making me feel like I couldn't start it because what a waste of water, right? So finally, I got this beautiful dishwasher and I can't even use it? Well, now I'm just bitter because I hate dishes. I know, hate is a strong word, but I hate dishes. Well, on a positive note, it forced me to clean while cooking. And it's important to clean as you go when you're cooking so that you don't have a towering mess to take care of after dinner. Having fewer dishes required me to do that because I needed dishes to cook with. Oh, and even better, my sink was pretty much never full. I'm used to dishes piling so high that you can't even wash your hands without being sprayed in the face. But now, with so few dishes, they couldn't pile up that high. I didn't have enough. And that's how week one went. Week two, my husband threw a bowl at me. So yeah, minimalism is taking a toll on my marriage. He is also not a fan of having to hand wash dishes after every meal. But we did do a few things differently this week to make our lives easier in the process. Did you know that you can eat ice cream out of a wine glass? And paper towels make for a decent plate if you're eating a sandwich or even if you're shredding up cheddar cheese. You can also eat cereal out of a mixing bowl. No matter how large it may be, it'll work. Some nights I was so stubborn about not having to wash dishes that I resorted to other methods. Tonight we're making chicken wraps and there is no plates. Nothing in the dishwasher. This is a kid's plate. You 
doing your plate? You get a plate. Snooze, you lose. Hey, I'm not lazy. I'm creatively resourceful. Now, I have to admit something. I cheated this week. I brought back two towels. One per person was just too little because then if one got dirty, we would be stuck since there were no backups until the laundry was washed. So for the next three weeks, we had a total of six towels. But I still think that's pretty minimal though, right? Right, Don? Ooh, I bet I could find a YouTube video of her saying right. Right. So we put this right. By week three, I did have a bit of a desire to add more clothes to my closet. I didn't do it, but I wanted to. I felt like although it was easy to get dressed, I just wish I had maybe like five more options. Although nobody noticed that I was wearing the same clothes on repeat, so that's a plus. Well, at least they didn't tell me. Another thing I noticed this week was that there was a lot less laundry to do. It cut my laundry down from three baskets a week to two. Because when you have less clothing, you're taking a minute to ask yourself, is this really dirty? I often did the smell test. If it didn't smell bad and it wasn't dirty, then I hung it right back up in the closet. Whereas before, I would just throw my clothes into the hamper after every wear, regardless of if it was actually dirty or not. I guess I was washing my clothes way more often than I actually needed to. Also, at this point, my son still hadn't noticed that any of his toys or books were missing. By week four, I found this sudden motivation to declutter more. I was enjoying the benefits of all my empty spaces and the feelings of comfort it gave me, which caused me to notice clutter in other spaces that I previously would have never bat an eye at. So I would wait until the kids went to sleep and then I would spend a couple hours reducing more inventory. It's like Dawn put me on some kind of minimalism high and I wanted another hit. There's something about getting rid of stuff that feels good. And every time I saw another open, empty space, I felt free in charge. I started talking to my stuff. You have no power over me. My stuff started talking back. Please don't put me in the donation pile. Please, please. Oh no, that was my husband actually messing with me. I had nightmares for a week. I was so eager to once again experience the liberating sensation of minimizing things that I couldn't wait for my kids to go to bed so that I could do more. What have I become? What is going on? Don, what did you put in this coffee you mailed me? <gasps> so yeah, I was kind of enjoying minimalism. Although my husband still wasn't on board. In fact, he made it pretty clear that he did not like it one bit. I think I'm gonna need to slip him some of the coffee to change his mind. Another benefit I noticed this month was that my son showed an increased interest in books. He was acting as if they were brand new. Meanwhile, before, he didn't notice when he had 50 of them. But now that he has 15, he suddenly wants to look at them? Now that's interesting. Week four was a good week. Now, when the 30 days were over, it was time to go through my stuff and decide what I should bring back. So I started with my clothing. This was interesting to me. I fully expected that I was gonna pull out my bins of clothes and want to bring half of them back into my closet because I am prone to bad habits, but I didn't. I looked through that bin and just started purging. Shirt after dress after pants, I threw into the donation pile, which was so weird because of the clothes I was choosing to get rid of were clothes that I've held on to for years. Shirts I hadn't worn since I was in high school that I just didn't have the strength to get rid of. But suddenly the decision was easy. A decision that would have caused me pain a month ago was now effortless. In fact, it felt really good to finally let go. I don't have to hold on to these shirts anymore that I know will never fit me again. I can be free from them. I've realized that my stuff oddly makes me feel like I'm in bondage to it. In the end, I decided to bring back three shirts and three dresses, which brought me up to eight shirts and eight dresses total. I also brought back four cardigans, which now totaled six in my closet. And when I went through my pants, I decided to get rid of all the funky colored jeans and leggings because I never wear them. After this process, I managed to donate 39 items of clothing, which is shocking to me 
because I recently just went through all of my clothes already and donated a bunch of them like two months ago. As far as dishes, I feel a little differently about them. I brought back all of my plates. Yes, I am now back to eight plates and I'm very happy to have them back. I also brought back all of my bowls plus an extra one that somebody just happened to give to me during this time, but I feel good about it because they really aren't taking up more room. They are compact and stackable, and I'm all about freeing up space, but also being practical. Cups, I brought back three, so now we have a total of six. I brought back two coffee mugs, totaling four, and two storage containers, totaling eight. I did not bring back my three tiered cutting boards, as tempting as it was, and I didn't bring back my mixing bowls either. Although spatulas, they all returned. You can never have enough spatulas. So yeah, I brought some dishes back, but if you look at my space, even with everything I brought back, it still looks so minimal in here and I love it. I mean, compared to before, this looks a lot better, I think. And I may no longer be a minimalist, but I have simplified my kitchen and I really like it. Look, my coffee still fits and that's all that matters to me. So what do I think about minimalism? I'm a fan. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. My favorite part about it is just the freedom of being able to put things away. There's actually room in the cabinets to do so. I don't have to play a game of checkers just to put away the sugar. And cleaning with less is just easier. The challenge motivated me so much that I got rid of about 14 bags of stuff in the end. I began looking at every single item in my house as inventory that I had to manage. Did I really want to manage it anymore? Most of the time, my answer was no. So I let go of a lot. And man, it felt good. Are you interested in trying out minimalism? Well, Don put together a printable for you so that you can get started. I will add it to the description. And if you haven't, check out Dawn's channel, The Minimal Mom. She is truly the most motivating woman in the entire world of YouTube. Just my opinion. Speaking of reducing inventory and decluttering, check out this video next where I try Dana K. White's No Mess Decluttering System. Can you really declutter without making a mess? Let's find out. I'll see you there.